Well, the son of convicted murderer Alec Murdaugh is pushing back on claims that his family had any involvement in the death of his former classmate. In a statement, Buster Murdaugh called them baseless rumors. Uh, Stephen Smith died on a road near the Murdoch family home in 2015. Uh, police said the South Carolina teen was hit by a car, but Smith's family believes he was murdered. They have raised money to try to exhume his body for an independent autopsy. The investigation was reopened in 2021 while police were looking into the deaths of Maggie and Paul Murdoch. And CBS News national correspondent knows every inch of this story. <laughs> yeah. Nikki Batiste, she is here with us now. Hey, Nikki, great to see you. Um, what do we know about the Murdoch family's connection to Stephen Smith and specifically Buster's friendship with him? What we know is very little. I'll give a little more context to what happened. You heard the basic details. Whenever Stephen Smith's body was found, there's actually audio of police from that time disagreeing over what happened to him. Mm -hmm. One coroner thought it deemed it a hit and run, and that was the final decision on this cause of death. But one previously thought it was a homicide. I spoke with a legal expert who pointed out one really interesting fact about the way Stephen Smith was found. His shoes were on but loose. Shoes. And he said that's virtually impossible in a hit and run mm. at the speed at which even at 30 miles per hour a person would be hit. So there's always been some thought that maybe that's not what happened. There, the, there are two reasons the Murdoch name is swirling around this case. And I want to be really clear, a lot of this is just speculation and rumor. During the course of the investigation, investigators say they interviewed 40 to 40 people who mentioned the Murdoch name, some of them mentioning Buster Murdoch, is somehow being involved in some aspect of right. his death or the way he was found. Again, no, no Murdoch was ever questioned in the case and no charges were ever brought against them. And then, of course, as you mentioned, when police were investigating the double murder, murder of Alec Murdoch's wife and other son, they found something during the course of that murder investigation that prompted them to reopen the Stephen Smith case. We don't know what that is, okay. but that's a lot of the reason this is back in the news. You know, one thing that really caught my attention when I was reading about this other case, which of course I was curious about after watching that Netflix uh, doc series. And was, the 48 Hours that and, you did. Too. Well, yes. certainly right. your incredible work on 48 Hours was, um, now that I'm seeing that they're, the family uh, of Stephen Smith wants to exhume the body, what are they looking for? I mean, it's been so many years. What kind of evidence would you find at this point? What they want is to someone to re-examine how he died, because they believe Sandy Smith's mother has said publicly, I think he was murdered. I don't think he was killed in a hit and run like the coroner ultimately decided. Let's exhume his body and take another look. That is the sole purpose of the exhumation. And she's raised, I just looked, $81,000 on her GoFundMe wow. to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Well. Nikki, as you say, Alec Murdoch's murder trial, which got such national attention, also uh, led to people wanting to know more uh, about um, Stephen Smith's murder. How have those two elements played together to try and to try to actually bring more light to Stephen Smith's death? Well, I think everyone's talking about Alec Murdaugh and the Murdaugh family now. The trial brought it back to the forefront of, of news coverage, discussion. And there have always been not just the Stephen Smith case swirling around this family, but the death of a housekeeper that right. is tied to the family. Um, a bizarre incident where Alec Murdaugh allegedly asked someone to shoot him in the head. Yeah. And then there's the Stephen right. Smith case. And I think also for Stephen Smith's mother and his family, this was a perfect opportunity to get the attention that they need to get some answers. I actually asked the lead prosecutor in the murder trial, he's also, his office is also handling the Stephen Smith case, when can we expect anything? And he just said, there's a lot going on with this family and we have a lot of cases, but right. we'll this, get there, like this stay is tuned. The, the case that we've all been paying primary attention to right. was the, the case of, uh, of um, Alex's son and wife being murdered, but there are three other deaths yes. that are swirling around Not that to people mention want answers. Financial crimes committed yeah, by Alec right. Murdoch that they've got to handle too. It would be just too much of a coincidence for somebody to. <laughs> the, that's the, probably what they're thinking. The last thing I want yeah. to say, and it's it's it is a part of the story. Stephen Smith was a young gay man, yeah. a classmate of of Buster Murdoch, and by some accounts, a friend. So there's been some concern that it might, his mother has said maybe it was a hate crime. So you know, it sort of that also elevated mm. the interest. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um,
people and answers. Yeah. Well, I know that you and I, behind the scenes, had a long conversation about fertility this morning. <laughs> Just switching gears. <laughs> I want to completely switch gears and uh, talk about, well, your IVF series, which has been so remarkable. I'm sure you're getting you know, questions from people all around the world. And uh, your next part is airing tonight. Can you tell us a little bit more about what we should expect to see? Yes, tonight is twofold. It's taking a look at egg freezing, which is becoming more and more popular. It's also expensive, so it's a luxury if you can afford it or if you have fertility insurance. So we take a look at that and you you know, we look at whether or not it's really as reliable as people think. Mm -hmm. And secondly, we talk about the fact that young women and men aren't educated about family mm -hmm. planning and that that's yeah. critical to understand the process. And Wednesday, don't miss, we have a con a very candid I'm conversation so excited for about this. menopause with Gail King and Drew Barrymore, which is also very informative. Well, that's why Amazing. that's why Amazing. you just deserve all the applause in the world, Nikki, because you <laughs> other people have talked about fertility and you're and you're making it personal, but you're also going into all those levels in which these conversations have previously been uncomfortable for women and for men who are listening and who may we don't want to hear about this, yeah. but you're bringing it to the forefront, and I just have to applaud you for that. Thank you. And it's including your own journey. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I made the move to share my own journey, and the response has been great. And it, as you said, it's just so many people go through this and hoping that this sparks conversation. Awesome. Uh, well, it certainly is already. We, yeah, we have been conversing about it a lot. <laughs> Thanks, Nikki. Thank you.